Hello everyone, my name is Josh from Keep It Techie and welcome to my introduction to Linux course. The purpose of this course is to help you get a full overview of what the Linux operating system is and how it is used in everyday life. I noticed there was a need for a basic course for people interested in getting into the IT field. Now Linux is used in pretty much all aspects of the field. For example, Linux is used in the cloud. It's also used in the cybersecurity field, especially when you're looking at pen testing. So I created this course so you can at least get the basics of using the Linux operating system. Now, a quick disclaimer, if you're looking for a more advanced course for, let's say, a Linux certification, then this may have some information that can help you, but it will not cover all the topics needed in order to pass a certification exam. And just to give you an overview, I will only cover basic topics such as installation, basic configuration, terminal usage, understanding the file system, as well as software management. So please remember this course is designed for people that are very new to the Linux operating system. I have a course that hasn't been fully completed that will be released in the near future which will cover all modules that are needed for the CompTIA Linux Plus exam. So once that's uploaded, you can easily roll from this course into the next course in order to take the CompTIA Linux Plus exam. Now let's start off by giving you a little bit about myself. I have been an IT professional since 2007. I've worked in multiple positions, some of which a network administrator, systems administrator, and I'm currently working as a database administrator. And I've also been a Linux user since the year of 2008. So I have a lot of knowledge when it comes to working with the Linux operating system. Now, what is Linux? When most people ask this question, the response that's given is simply Debian, Ubuntu, Red Hat, or maybe Arch Linux. But these are what is called Linux distributions. And Linux is basically the kernel of those Linux distributions combined with other software such as GNU software and other pre-installed software. Now, just to break down everything that's combined to create a distribution, we have to look at some of the creators of each separate port. And the first one I need to cover is Richard Stallman. And in the 80s, uh, many companies started developing their own Unix operating system. For instance, IBM, uh, Sun, and HP, they all had different versions of the Unix operating system that they were developing. And the results was a mass of Unix dialects and a dozen different ways to do the same thing. And so this is where Richard Stallman came in to end the era of Unix separation and prevent people from reinventing the wheel by starting the GNU project. And GNU simply means GNU is not Unix. And his goal was to make an operating system that was freely available to everyone and where everyone could work together. And many of the command line tools that are in modern day Linux use the GNU tools that was created under this organization by Richard Stallman. And just to give you a little bit more about his background, he's an American free software movement activist, also a programmer that went to MIT. And he also created the organization called Free Software Foundation. And he's an avid campaigner for software to be distributed in a manner such that its users receive the freedom to use, study, distribute, and modify that software. So now this rolls right into the next question, which is what is the Linux kernel? And the Linux kernel is a free and open source monolithic module multitasking Unix like operating system kernel. And the kernel is simply a program that talks directly to the hardware and manages the resources and processes. And the meaning behind Linux is Linux is not Unix. And to cover the creator 
uh, Lin the Linux kernel was actually created by a guy named Linus Torvalds. And after its creation, it was soon adopted as the kernel for the GNU operating system. And it became a free replacement for Unix. And since that combination of these two projects, it has spawned a large number of operating system distributions. And they're pretty much all commonly called Linux. Now that we understand the GNU project as well as the Linux kernel, let's go ahead on and cover a Linux distribution. Now there are many Linux distributions. But simply put, a Linux distribution is a complete Linux system package. And many Linux distributions are available to meet just about any computing requirements you could have. And most distributions are customized for a specific user group, such as a business user, uh, multimedia enthusiasts, software developers, and your average home user. And as you can see on the screen, this is four major Linux distributions that are out there. One is Ubuntu, Debian, and then Kali Linux, as well as Red Hat. And just to explain each one of them, Ubuntu and Debian are one of your basic desktop Linux distributions that you can use. And we all know Ubuntu is the most popular distribution in the world. And I threw Kali Linux up there because this is the most used distribution when it comes to cybersecurity, as well as the hacker culture. And Red Hat covers the business side because this distribution is not 100% free. And the way they charge as far as the model for Red Hat is that businesses pay for the support. But as stated, there are a whole bunch of Linux distributions that will meet most of your needs. And now let's cover the course distribution, which is the distribution I'll use throughout this course, which is Ubuntu. And we know that it's Debian based and it is composed mostly of free and open source software. And Ubuntu is released in three different editions. They have a desktop edition, a server edition, and a core edition, which is typically used for Internet of Things devices, as well as robots. And all the editions can run on the computer alone or in a virtual machine, which is why I chose Ubuntu for this course, because I want you guys to kind of follow along no matter the hardware that you are working with. Now, let's go on and get started. 